won't chew my gum while we're doing this. All righty, we are live. <laughs> so I uh, want to welcome everyone. As you all have noted over the past uh, couple of months, we have um, started doing virtual information sessions out of the admissions office. And we wanted to be able to do that in order to stay connected to those who are still aspiring to uh, come to seminary and still need to have a face-to-face -face discussion. And also we desire to um, include um, our wonderful uh, faculty in those conversations. And so here we are. So today um, we, we are having our virtual information session where we're focusing on uh, women in ministry and women in seminary. So uh, to reintroduce myself, if this is your first time viewing, my name is Fakisha Gunn. I am the Director of Enrollment Services here at Memphis Theological Seminary. If you have any questions, we will stop and uh, answer questions in the comment section. So please make sure that you post your questions. I've also invited two of my favorite faculty members, <laughs> and I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves. Ladies? Janelle, you want to go? Sure. Well, thanks, Reverend Gunn. I'm Janelle Crott Baker, and I teach in mission, evangelism, sociology of religion, and interfaith intercultural electives. And I have been at MTS for five years. And I'm actually a lay person. Um, and we welcome women who are aspiring for ordained ministry as well as lay ministry at MTS. And I really love the rich variety of students as well as um, contexts that people are in and that they're preparing for among our students. Uh, my name is Mitzi Miner and I don't teach nearly as long a list of topics as Janelle does. I teach New Testament. <laughs> I can stop right there. Uh, I teach New Testament, um, uh, New Testament books. I teach Greek, um, sometimes thematic issues in New Testament, but I keep my nose stuck right in the pages of the New Testament itself. Uh, I've been at seminary, I'm about to start my 28th year. Um, I'm planted pretty deeply in this soil. I'm an ordained Cumberland Presbyterian. Uh, some of you will know that the roots of the seminary are in the Cumberland Church, and so uh, I'm rooted here and have enjoyed being here. As Janelle said, uh, we welcome a wide variety of, of, of students, period, but of women students, since that's a particular interest for today, who do a variety of ministries, many of them creative, many of them um, very traditional pulpit-oriented type ministries, but we welcome all of them and enjoy the conversation that they make possible um, that we, Janelle and I, get to share and Fakisha gets to share. Uh, and we're glad you're here and exploring MTS with us. Wonderful. Um, I, I graduated from MTS in 2012 and um, I took um, some courses from uh, Dr. Minor, and um, I can definitely say uh, <laughs> the New Testament will come alive for you. And so every time I see her in the hallway, I say, Dr. Minor, you're one of my favorite teachers ever, hands down. Um, but I do want to talk us, uh, and I'll start with you, Dr. Minor, in regards to um, if you could share a little bit about um, New Testament and I do particularly want you to talk about the course that you're uh, teaching for the fall in 2020. When I saw the title, it gave me pause and intrigue. Can you please talk about that particular course? Sure. 
Um, first of all, New Testament generally, we uh, I, I don't know that I cover the entire New Testament over the course of the New Testament curriculum, but we spend a lot of time in Gospels, we spend a lot of time with Paul, we spend a lot of time in the book of Revelation, <clears throat> which is one of my favorite books to study. Uh, and some people are surprised by that, but I love ex exploring the book of Revelation. The course that Makisha is uh, referencing this fall is entitled uh, Apostles, Prophets, and Troublemakers. Uh, liberation in the early church through the eyes of its uh, And I love to teach this course. The early church, the followers of Jesus were a part of the first century Roman world, which was a terribly oppressive world for them. It was, made life very difficult. You may be familiar with Paul's phrase from the letter uh, to the Galatians that says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, which is an incredible claim in the context of the Roman Empire. And so to take a look at what freedom would have meant for them, what liberation would have meant for them, and for the women in the, among the early followers of Jesus, it's a particularly powerful um, idea new way of life, uh, opening up possibilities, because the Roman world was incredibly restricted for women. Basically, they were there to produce male heirs for the men who were in power, uh, but not in the early Jesus movement. And so looking at them, exploring their stories, many of their stories we just only have bits and pieces of, because that was the culture. Women's stories were not always valued. And so we just see bits and pieces. But those bits and pieces are often wonderfully suggestive of the kinds of opportunities that were being offered to followers of Jesus. And when you look at, at the women followers, that idea of liberation and freedom and what was possible just really can shine forth. So it's a great, great way to explore the life that Jesus offered uh, those followers of Jesus uh, in the first century. So it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Super, we're having a, a lot of uh, people who are not, uh, who are non-degree seeking students uh, who want to audit that particular course. Right. So um, just the description and the name itself um, draws you in, but listen, when you get into the class, I can pretty much guarantee you that you will walk away with a different perspective and view of the text. And so one of the things I really love about MTS is their um, uh, dedication and focus to um, making sure that we hear from all people in, in the Bible. And so as faculty members, can you all talk a little bit more about uh, the seminaries, um, the, the seminaries desire and, uh, and, and push and even uh, is push of the mission to make sure that, uh, educate, that we're educating both men and women and equipping them for ministry, not just uh, inside the church, but also in the real world. Sure, um, starting even with just our, our syllabi. So when we look at our syllabi, um, I think all of us as professors have a number of goals. Um, first of all, we wanna look at the variety of our students and the variety of their interests and context and think about who's in our class and what are they hoping to gain from the course. And so in each of our courses, we're looking at developing students holistically. So we're looking at their intellectual side, their, uh, their spiritual side, their, um, the fact that they live as members of communities, both locally um, and globally. And so we wanna think about um, the course material holistically, and we wanna think about preparation for ministry and also preparation for being a Christian and to living faithfully in the world. And then I think we also, any, any given topic or course, we also wanna look at who the students are interacting with. So on our syllabi, usually you're going to see, you know, of the, the books that you'll be reading in a given semester, you're gonna see women authors, you're gonna see authors that are people of color, you're gonna see authors from a variety of theological um, standpoints. So there, there may be um, you know, a Presbyterian author or a Methodist author or a Pentecostal author, um, or even an author, depending on the course, who is not a person of faith. 
And so within every course, I think we, we really want to explore a topic from um, you know, voices that may be prominent historically and also voices that are underrepresented um, and really seek um, to, to look at justice as a motif um, and that as a, a Christian value. So that, um, you know, Dr. Minor was just talking about um, the idea of freedom in Christ. And I think a focus on liberation and on those who are oppressed um, and how Jesus approached people in those situations is a strong theme in a lot of our courses. Dr. Minor, I don't know what you might want to add to that or if you have a different perspective. No, not a different perspective. <clears throat> it, I would add that it that 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 way of approaching subject matter runs across all of our courses. Janelle teaches, or Dr. Baker, I should say, teaches sociology of religion or mission or evangelism. I teach New Testament. Those are very different subject matters. But I do the same thing. I'm looking for authors. In fact, to just today, I ordered two new books for a class in the fall written by Latino authors. Um, we're looking at, at works from, um, particularly from women. That uh, I already have a, a book written by a woman for that particular course. But we're also looking at the newspaper. And well, I guess these days you look online uh, for your news, right? Um, right? So the world that we currently live in, uh, issues, the, the pandemic, um, the issues of racial injustice and inequality that are being addressed all across the country. Those are topics that we will pursue in our classes because that's the world in which we're all doing ministry right now. What is it that, that we as followers of Jesus need to say to the world right now, given what we're going through, um, given what all of us are going through? And, and what are the specifics and particulars of this community or that community? And that makes for a rich and vibrant and relevant conversation uh, within our, our classroom contexts. I find those conversations, um, even 28 years later, pretty wonderfully stimulating. Wonderful. Uh, I want to pause for just one second because it looks like we may have some technical difficulties going on on Facebook, but I want to make sure. Okay. It may just be uh, my computer because my phone is still going. <laughs> so my apologies for that. Um, and, and, and I love what you all are saying that it is uh, not uh, the diversity of, uh, of perspectives and views are not just based on the course. We're giving you the whole gambit <clears throat> because it's important for us to holistically train and give our students a holistic view of, um, of, of uh, in, in, our, in, our, um, in our curriculum. So I appreciate that very much. Um, Dr. Miner. <laughs> Um, I want to, uh, or actually, uh, I didn't even laugh like that. It makes me nervous. But, I know, but actually, I meant, I meant to say, uh, Dr. Baker, because, uh, Dr. Baker and I were having a conversation and she talked about, um, and I would love for you to share about you being a lay person and, um, and also how, um, uh, school or the, our seminary is not just for those who, uh, sent a pastoral call. Um, but it's also those who are in the lay ministry as well. And so I would love for you to share um, about your perspective in regards to that. Sure. Yeah. So um, as you may know, if you've, if you've spoken with um, Reverend Gunn about the various degrees we have, we have a Master of Arts in Christian Ministry, which is a degree primarily oriented toward lay people or people who are pursuing a deacon track um, in some denominations. Um, the Master of Divinity, which is a really versatile degree, and it, you know, really good for those who are pursuing a traditional, um, you know, pulpit ministry, a pastoral ministry, but also really good for those interested in chaplaincy, whether that be in a hospital setting or a college or university setting or um, a, an, a, set of, a setting of incarceration or the military, um, and then for nonprofit leadership. 
Um, and we also have folks who are pursuing a degree not for a professional reason, but more of a, um, a sense of their own Christian education and that they want to take um, they want to take things to the next level in terms of, um, you know, not just learning about um, the history of the faith or the context of the faith or various issues um, within Christianity or the world and how we might respond faithfully, um, but they want to do that in a graduate context. We also have some students who are preparing for further study. So maybe they're looking to get a PhD and teach in a college or university setting. Um, so I think that um, sometimes people have this idea that seminary is just for those who want to preach on Sundays, and we certainly prepare students for doing that, but we have a variety of students who are preparing for all sorts of contexts, and that's one thing I love about MTS is that um, not only um, are people different ages or genders or denominations or races, but also people have very different senses of call to ministry. And I think that all of us are called to ministry, but it can look really different um, depending on uh, the gifts that God has given each of us and the context each of us are put in. Please forgive me, I'm having some technical difficulties on my end. <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, Dr. Baker, for, uh, for sharing that. Um, another question that I have for you all are, um, uh, what would you share with women who are thinking about attending seminary? Um, you ought to, how's that? Um, <laughs> we, have, we have a number of women students who come to us, come to the seminary, I mean, uh, Janelle was just mentioning a wide variety of calls. Uh, many women come trying to understand a call. Mm. Because as many of us know, churches still don't always encourage women in terms of the kinds of calls that they may be hearing or believe uh, that their lives should fulfill. And so they've not been given opportunities to explore that as fully and as deeply as they may have wished. And so we get a number of, of women who come and have questions that they have always wanted to ask. Uh, they have dreams or ideas that they've wondered if this was possible. Um, they want to understand themselves in ways that they've not been able to do in a church context. And so seminary becomes for them a really marvelous place uh, for exploring those things. For one thing, they encounter a whole bunch of other women who are also asking questions and who are wondering about this or that ministry opportunity or who may have come out of a denomination that did not encourage them um, strongly in terms of their vocational uh, ideas or aspirations. And they come to seminary and here are people who are wondering the same things and asking the same questions and considering creative possibilities for ministry like they may be doing. And uh, the really good news out of this is you're not crazy. You know, you're, there are others who are like you who are doing these, and that exploration uh, has also been uh, pretty rich, pretty wonderful, often challenging, to be honest, um, but, um, but it helps us become better members of the body of Christ so that we are all fulfilling our particular um, place or possibility within that body. One of the things I love about that image that Paul gives us is diversity is a necessity if we're mm. going to be the body of Christ. If we're all hands, we're not a body. You know, if we're all ears, we're not a body. Uh, so we need all of those, those, those parts. And MTS is a place, uh, we hope, we aspire to be the place that allows all students, uh, including our women's students, uh, to, to, to wrestle and wonder and ask questions and explore in order to figure out what place in the body of Christ they are called to fulfill, um, to, to in, embody, to inhabit. And, and again, it's pretty wonderful to get to be a part of someone's journey uh, to that kind of discovery. Awesome. Dr. Baker, would you like to add anything? 
Sure. Well, um, I just want to say, you know, if you're at some seminaries, if you're a woman and you're thinking of enrolling, um, you may be, you know, one woman in a class of 20, um, or, you know, you, you may be 1% of the student body, but at MTS, about half of our students are women. And so I think that's a wonderful thing about the seminary is that um, we get to see, you know, a very loose representation of the population in general, right? Where both men and women are called to ministry. And so I think that sense of, you know, you're not alone, it can be scary. I think, especially for women who are coming from traditions in which the call of women might be perceived as a question mark within the tradition. Um, but it's, I think, a really fruitful place to explore those questions of call. Um, and, you know, that we ask a lot of difficult questions in seminary and it can be really challenging, but we also try to create built-in support networks so we can ask those questions in a way that it, they can be generative rather than damaging. Mm. I like that part. Because <laughs> um, especially with the the questions that were asked were challenged and uh, we're having to explore and discern. And we also need to be able to do that in a place where we also feel safe. And I appreciate that MTS not only offers that uh, safe space, but also offers uh, faculty who um, don't mind having one-on-ones. I did not have Dr. Minor as a teacher my first year. But I don't know if you remember this, but you subbed for one of my professors and you said, my door is always open. If you need to come, you want to talk to me about anything uh, about the scriptures, you have any questions, please do. So I was testing to see if that was true. <laughs> and I, I actually uh, came by your office, we talked, and then I sent you an email of, of a sermon that I was writing. And we went back and forth through email. And I was like, wow, this is amazing to be able to do this and to pick your brain about different topics. But I, I, I love the fact that you all talked about the um, MTS having uh, about half uh, women as, uh, st as students. Can you also talk about our diversity of faculty as well? You're counting. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> Absolutely, I was. Uh, I don't even know uh -huh. what our total faculty. Janelle, do you know off the top of your head how many? What, what the yeah, total we, is? we have about eight um, full-time faculty right now, and yeah, I can't even remember. We're about half women and half men. Uh huh. Um, I think we're a little. We're about maybe a third African American, and the rest are white. Um, and we are always. Um, conscientious as we hire new faculty about diversity in um, race, in gender, in perspective, in age, in expertise. Um, so, you know, as new positions come available, we, we definitely think about those things in our hiring. Um, we also have a number of adjuncts. Um, so in addition to the approximately eight full-time faculty members, we have other folks who are leaders in the community teach our courses. Um, and I think that's also about an equal representation of men and women. And again, people from a variety of, of backgrounds, um, ethnically and theologically and otherwise. Two new faculty colleagues joining us this fall, both of whom are women, uh, one of whom is African-American and one of them is white. So uh, a pretty clear illustration of what Dr. Baker just, you know, just said. So we're looking forward to welcoming them, even if we have to do it a bit from a distance these days, but um, we're looking yeah. forward to Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I did want to ask a question. I know that we talked about it a little bit over um, email, but um, Dr. Minor, could you talk a little bit about uh, women uh, leaders in the New Testament? Yeah. Um, issue of leadership in the church um, often turns back to the New Testament as it should, and one of my favorite things to do, and it'll come up in the class that I'm teaching uh, this fall, to explore the role that women play in the early Jesus movement. Again, we often only have bits and pieces of their stories, but what is there is wonderfully suggestive. The title of the course is Prophets, Apostles, and Troublemakers. I could have done prophets, apostles, missionaries, pastors, uh, house church leaders, because, you know, I could have made the list this long, in other words, because women, uh, the New Testament indicates that women 
played all of those roles in the early church. They, there was a Mary Magdalene who appears to have assumed significant leadership in the actual gathering of people around Jesus. And she is there to bear witness to the resurrection. Frankly, when the men had cut and run, if we want to pause a moment, chuckle about that. Uh, we've got people like Phoebe and um, Prisca and Junia. Prisca and Junia, Paul both calls both of them, or call, he calls Junia and indicates that Prisca, both were apostles in the early church. Phoebe is a minister in the early church. You may not know that because the English translations have often hid those, hidden those things from us uh, to make the women seem like they were sort of, um, what would we call support staff? How about that? Um, when in reality, they were performing significant leadership roles. And, and Paul has no trouble with them. Uh, we often think of Paul as not being uh, a good friend of women uh, in the early church. That's actually not fair to him. Uh, he's not always, um, how would I put it? I'm not sure he would have been the easiest person to get along with at times, but he has no trouble. Uh, calling Phoebe a minister in the church in Sincre or referring to Junia as an apostle and in fact saying that she and likely her husband are prominent among the apostles. He has no trouble with Prisca as significant co-worker in his uh, ministry situation. Those women's stories that come down to us, even, even those fragments, tell us again that when we talk about the liberation, the freedom in Christ that came those early followers of Jesus was very real, very concrete, and women were able to assume, um, or maybe I should put it this way, they were able to fulfill their call um, mm. in the context of that early Jesus movement in ways that the larger Roman Empire, frankly, didn't know what to do with. Um, and, and the women jumped in and did that, and, and again, very much affirmed um, in many parts of the New Testament. And so I love those stories. And I love what they tell us both about the early Jesus movement, about those women in particular. We have a lot of grandmothers that we don't even know we have. And, and I love finding out about them. Um, I love what I learn from them. And then I try to honor them and live up to the standard that they set for us. Um, mm -hmm. so, so they, let me say this, that, that if somebody ever tells you that women shouldn't hold leadership positions in the early church because that's not how God made women and that's never happened. That's simply not true. Uh, even though, again, the English translations sometimes have hidden those realities from us. Uh, I love my grandmothers. I like how you, um, I haven't heard uh, um, anyone call uh, the women grandmothers, <laughs> but I'm going to adopt adopt that. Um, I, I adopted uh, it from somebody, Fakisha, pass it on. So. Uh, <laughs> That's super, and I really appreciate that. And so, um, do you all have any uh, final things that you would like to share that we may not have covered that you think is important to share? Janelle, do you wanna? Uh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm wondering if did, are there any questions from folks on Facebook or? There are no email? questions. Okay. But there are the praises of Dr. Minor is the best and that's capitalized teacher. <laughs> and structure of the New Testament in Greek. And then um, there are um, a lot of uh, hashtags and ads um, at uh, support staff <laughs> that you <laughs> stated. And so, um, uh, and I appreciate uh, you even uh, stating that because um, sometimes, you know, uh, um, as women, we feel like that that's, the, that's what we're supposed to do and that's the highest that we can go. And so um, to the fact that uh, when you come to seminary um, and I'll state it like uh, my uh, Old Testament teacher stated to me is that, you know, when you get into a uh, seminary, um, if you're coming to MTS for people to agree with you and not challenge you, this is not the place. <laughs> we will challenge you and we will ask you to explore and, and, and seek out uh, answers for why you believe what you believe. And so um, I appreciated that. Um, I love the diversity of MTS. 
Um, I heard one of my uh, CP brothers say this, that he didn't realize that he was CP until he got amongst people who were not. And so uh, he said that it defines, he has to define, uh, he understands and it defines who he is with more diversity. So he appreciated the diversity. So, but uh, Dr. Minor, did you have any last things to say? It looks like you were gonna say something. I may have been, and it, uh, and it, if it was, it slipped away. Uh -huh. um, it's uh, like Janelle has said, like you have said, uh, the diversity, the question, the welcoming of questions uh, sometimes makes us uncomfortable. Yeah. But it also yeah. provides the opportunity to be pushed, uh, to grow, consider things you've not considered before. I think most of us have had the experience of the, the uncomfortable moments in our lives have usually resulted in our greatest growth. Um, yeah. Usually, usually as long as we're comfortable, we'll sit right here and not not grow, explore, not do anything new. But when it's uncomfortable, we have to wrestle a bit and try and understand it. And, and so those moments push us into growth and it, and it provides for us in, our, in, the, in the MTS context, uh, what for me is, is a really rich um, and enriching uh, conversation uh, among students, between faculty members, between faculty members and students, between um, the enrollment staff, I, I think that's your title, uh, Takesha, Director of Enrollment, uh, something or other. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I forget that, you know, title, obviously titles escape, but uh -huh. the, the interaction is, is rich and, and pretty wonderful, and I'm, I'm very glad to be a part of it. And uh, one more thing I want to add along those lines is we have quite a number of uh, women alumni yeah. And who are doing really good work in Memphis and all over uh, the region and beyond. Um, mm -hmm. And I think of, you know, someone like Reverend Gunn, who is, uh, you know, a leader at MTS and also in a local church. And I think, you know, for prospective students, I would encourage you to talk to Reverend Gunn or other um, women pastors or leaders or graduates of MTS. And I think that when we share our stories, I think that can be helpful too, just to kind of have a sense of what someone else's path, path looked like, even though our path is going to look unique to our own lives and our own call. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a question. I think we kind of uh, addressed this, but I'll go back just in case you all want to add to it. But um, can the two of you discuss the diversity of subjects taught and addressed in seminary? Um, yeah, so I think if, if we look at our curriculum in general, um, in all of our degree programs, you're going to take a class in Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, a class in New Testament. You're going to take two classes that kind of uh, weave together theology and history, um, and that's for the church around the world. Um, you're going to take a, a class in mission, um, what is the call of the church, the call of Christians, uh, with regard to engagement with the world. Um, you'll take a, a class in, in ethics, and then all of our students are going to take a formation for ministry course, um, and that's about being sustained personally for the journey. Um, how do you have the resources that you need as a human being and a leader to be in ministry? Um, so those are some of the, the core courses that everybody will take. Um, whether you're in the Master of Arts in Christian Ministry or you're in the MDiv program. Um, if you're in the MDiv program, you'll also take preaching, you'll take um, liturgy, you'll take pastoral care, you'll take pastoral leadership, um, and then you'll take electives um, in a variety of, of areas. Um, if you're in a, a denomination that requires a denominational class, you might take you know, United Methodist polity um, or uh, early Methodism and American Methodism. If you're in the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, you would, might take a, a course specific to the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, as well as for another a number of denominations. Our curriculum also has interfaith, intercultural electives. So you're going to be taking two courses that look at the interaction among cultures or among faiths. So you might have a course looking at uh, world religions from a Christian perspective, 
or you know, looking at um, uh, justice issues from a Christian perspective, um, particularly looking at underrepresented voices. Um, Dr. Minor, what else am I forgetting in terms of what our curriculum entails? Yeah, I think you've covered the curriculum pretty well. The only thing I would add is then the opportunity to take electives that will strengthen your own preparation for your particular ministry. So for example, if you're going to do pastoral ministry and be preaching, you may take extra electives in Bible and in preaching. If you're going into chaplaincy, you may take more in, in pastoral care. If you're going to be doing educational ministry, you would take more electives in that area. So as to prepare you for the particular um, living out of your call. We're also working to expand those possibilities. Uh, Dr. Baker mentioned nonprofit leadership, uh, for example, a little while ago. We're exploring ways to enable students to do that work well because that's a growing uh, area of ministry in our, in our world and a needed one. Uh, we're also looking at um, current circumstances, how we do ministry in a world where, um, where we have a pandemic going on. Uh, what does that mean in terms of uh, issues of health healthcare justice and or racial justice as those things uh, the injustices there are exposed further by a pandemic. When we, um, when the first of the police um, issues with race exploded, we took students to Ferguson, uh, Missouri, for a court for a one-week intensive course on the ground in Ferguson. What does it mean to be followers of Jesus in a context like this one? So our elective offerings also allow students to pursue their particular ministry goals and or their particular personal goals. Maybe I just have a real intense interest here. This is for me. And you can take a course in that regard, you know, for that purpose as well. So earlier in this conversation, both Reverend Gunn and Dr. Baker used the word holistic. That really is what we strive to do, to enable students to grow into their call to grow holistically. Uh, and that is professionally and personally and spiritually and theologically um, and even in terms of maturity. So, so we hope, uh, we can't do all of that in a degree program, but we hope to put you on firm footing uh, mm -hmm. for pursuing your call for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you all so very, very much. I appreciate you all taking out your time. Um, it has, uh, both of you all, uh, personally have been a, a blessing to my life. And so I'm grateful for the NTS uh, community and uh, for the sisterhood that we have at NTS. Yeah. So uh, everyone, if you have any more questions, you can continue to uh, ask questions and we will come back and put the answers into the comment section. If you'd like to talk personally with a uh, admissions recruiter, please don't hesitate. Call our office. <laughs> email us. We would love to talk with you. Uh, we believe at, in, in, in admissions that we are walking alongside you in the call that God has over your life. So um, please give us a call. And uh, ladies, I will talk with you all later. Have a good okay. day. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah. Take care, everybody.